Are you paying hundreds of dollars for AI software that does simple tasks you could build yourself? Imagine being able to look at any AI tool, strip away the fancy interface and build the exact same thing into your existing workflow. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to break down popular AI tools, identify their core functions and rebuild them with no code automation. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to spot what these tools are really doing behind the scenes and create your own custom versions that fit perfectly into your business processes. I'll share the exact framework I use to analyze, decode, and rebuild any AI tools functionality using simple no-code solutions that integrate seamlessly with your current systems. So if you're ready to stop paying for overpriced AI tools and start building your own custom solutions, let's dive into how to reverse engineer and automate any AI task. Let's dive in. So it all started just over a year ago where I was running a pet care education company. We'd just come through a bit of a hard patch where we went from 10 team members down to three team members. And I had to rebuild the business differently. One thing that we did a lot of was podcasts and virtual summits. So we're interviewing a lot of guests and we were using a tool at the time called Cast Magic, which credits to them, they were quick out of the gates when, it, when AI came along and they've built a pretty incredible business as far as I know. But what I realized is that all they were really doing was taking a transcript from your podcast and then just running a, a few AI prompts over the top of it. Plus, in order to do so, I mean, at the time, I think they, they had their best plan at $39 a month and we were spending closer to like $60 a month because we were doing so many different interviews every single month. So it was starting to add up. And what I realized is surely that's not too hard to build ourselves. All we need to do really is use an API tap into the developer account of OpenAI and begin building out our workflows exactly how we want them and pulling the transcript and then just plugging the transcript in, running a few prompts. And you can see that's what I was building out here a year ago where we had different prompts for each of the different assets that we were doing, like the summaries and the descriptions. We had another automation for like building emails and all of that type of stuff. And what I realized is that for each individual podcast that we were doing, Instead of paying $39 a month, we, it was costing us less than $1 to do all of our AI assets at that time. That was a year ago, so it'd be even cheaper today. And we were giving these guys at least, I think, $50, $60 a month at that time to operate maybe six to 10 of these workflows each month, which is maybe six to $10 or less. It's probably closer to $5 a month. So these guys were making 60 of us, off us, and we were actually only using $5 worth of that $60 that we were getting from them. So I started building these workflows and they were pretty bad at the start. Like, you know, I was building it the slow and hard way. I was using these no code tools in the worst way possible, which is typically what happens when you get into building AI automations. Today, we do it in a much better way. Instead of building a whole host of different workflows, we basically just have one workflow for our content, whether that's social posts, promotional assets for podcasts, emails, all of that gets fed into this one trigger and or this one workflow and then it iterates through all of our prompts from our prompt library if you want to dive into like more around the big moves ai automation blueprint then make sure you go and check back on a few of the videos that we've been talking about recently around how we do all of that stuff but basically we just started rebuilding our cast magic workflow and all the things that we had to do inside of that tool inside of Airtable using the make.com types of scenarios and if you look back here, we can see now that we just fed those outputs directly into Airtable so that we had it all in a single workflow. So if we look at it, how that's come along now since the early days is we actually are building our fully enclosed systems where we have all of our things like the podcast name, host name, guest name. We can build an onboarding system when it comes to podcasts, for example. And you probably have a tool like Airtable. Maybe it's not Airtable exactly. Maybe it's Google Sheets that you work from. Maybe you have a database inside of your project man management tool like ClickUp, for example. What we can actually do instead of having to plan all of our information or all of our podcasting inside of that tool and then take that out of that tool and then go and put it into Cast Magic and then take it from Cast Magic and put it back into that tool again, we simply just create triggers to no-code tools like make.com, for example, using these types of triggers in order to send information into the API, trigger it through ChatGPT or any type of AI model that you want, and then send it back into our existing tables. Plus, the cool thing about Airtable is we can make it look a whole lot nicer as well. 
So we can have these flows built into interfaces, which makes it easy for our teams to work through and to accumulate all of the different information they need for creating a podcast. So we can feed in the transcript there, it'll run through some prompts, and then it will provide an output here with all of the things that we need to upload to our podcasting hosts, for example. So it has all of the fields that are ready to go inside of the one platform. We don't have to chop and change and change context all the time in a whole host of different platforms. That, so that's the journey that I've been on for a year now. And so many unexpected things have happened. Firstly, the pet care business, we got that back on track. Then I sold that in order to dive deep into AI automation because I know how much it can change business for those, especially small businesses who want to scale up in a more effective way so that you can enjoy more profit, more time, freedom, and all, all of those types of things. So the cool part, which you've probably already understanding anyway, is that the content side of the AI automations is the easy part. We can easily build out those things to produce all of our assets of podcasts, headlines, timestamps, all of those things. They're super easy to do. But another part of podcasting is then also the visual part of it, right? Which are the graphics for each episode where you might have certain graphics for your stories, for your social media feeds. And what most people are using is something like Canva, where you would come in and you would add that image there manually for your expert guest. And you would have a certain design that you would then upload. But there's actually solutions out there for images as well. Now you could create, generate AI images. They're probably not going to be a good use case for podcasting, but they're probably going to have good use cases elsewhere. But we can use tools that are purposely built for API use, meaning that we can use something like a Placid that allows us to create a template inside a Placid and create variables for the different parts of the creative. So we could turn this image section here into a, a variable. So that when we're onboarding our guests, they upload their image into the onboarding form. Then that onboarding form stores the, the image of the guest inside of Airtable. And then when we trigger it from Airtable, we can trigger that image to go directly via API into our template inside of Placid and just replace that image automatically. We can do the same for the episode number. We can do the same for the episode title. And then we can send it directly back into our workflow, into our podcast workflow, so that we have it right here ready to go. So this is how we can then start to build these fully AI automated workflows that take care of 80% of what humans used to do. You don't have to plan in one tool, move it across into Cast Magic to get all of your different assets, your sub subject lines, your emails, your social posts, your descriptions, your timestamps. Then we download all of that and then we come back across into our planning tool, add it all in here, do the editing. Then we go across into Canva and we download all of this, change it all up, download it, re-upload it into our other tool again. And it's all of this manual work that's happening, right? And it might take it two hours for a team member to do. Whereas what we can actually do now is from one trigger of a button, we can trigger these workflows. They go off and operate for anywhere from 60 seconds to maybe two or three minutes. And then they push everything back into the same dashboard. And all of that work that used to take 60 minutes, two hours is done within a few minutes at the most. This is the power of AI automation. I give this podcast example as an example because that's how I got started. There's, there's a very certain structure that we take in order to create different podcasts. And while the content of each podcast is a little bit different, the structure of how it all works is the same. And AI can do all of that work in an automated way. But there are a few key principles that we need to think about when it comes to AI automation, right? And one of those is around workflow mapping and creating these SOPs for how we do things. Because what used to happen is if you're creating an SOP in your business, you'll just create the steps that people have to go through in order to create the output. Whereas the most important part of building AI automations is understanding the why. Why are we doing certain things at certain stages? Why are we writing a description for a podcast in this fashion? Why are we putting the timestamps? Why are we then writing an email with a certain angle to promote that podcast? If we can teach the AI the why and the decision-making framework, it can use things like following some chain of thought processing when it comes to using these models and begin to create outputs that are either just as good as yours at the very minimum, or probably you'll get to a point where the AI output will be even better than what you can create, than what your team can create. And instead of it taking two hours to be created for a single workflow, it's taking just a few minutes. So the whole purpose in showing this video is to get you thinking a little bit differently. 
AI automation is absolutely changing the game when it comes to business. However, because it's quite new, people are still feeling either a little bit overwhelmed because there's so much that you need to think about and you don't know where to start, or they just don't really know what is really possible. They kind of know that there's something more that is out there, but they don't know what that is. And we dive into all of that inside of the Massive Moves membership. And each month we do a map and make sprint where we take existing processes inside of our businesses, processes that work, that our team are doing every single day, week or month. We take those processes that are proven to generate us money, proven to generate us followers and engagement. We take those parts that are working first and then we automate as much as we can of that process. Now, you still want to have human interaction and input and checkpoints, absolutely. But we want to automate those proven workflows first before we go to other tools like AI chatbots and AI voice assistants and all of these things that are new. New is always very risky, but it's also what people always want to pay their money for because it's new and exciting. It's a shiny object syndrome. But the people who are benefiting the most from AI are those who are using it within their proven processes. So I'd encourage you to go and take some of the principles that we've talked about here today and the example that I've given about AI automation and begin to look at all of your workflows and reimagine how you can actually begin to change the way you are doing things. And it might take a little bit of rebuilding of the entire business, moving into tools like Airtable or SmartSuite or some of these database type of tools that allow you to think from a system design point of view, building out your different database structure, thinking about how you're going to, what type of foundation or databases you need, what type of creation databases you need, and then really just mapping out how all of that works when it comes to your business so you can have customized solutions that allow you to move 10 times faster. That's really what we're talking about at The Big Moves and it's everything that we talk about inside of the blueprint as well. So if you do want to learn a little bit more around database structure and how that works, make sure you watch this video next.